Hello everyone, we are back. The FIFA Tactics series has returned with the release of FIFA 23. Thank you very much for joining me. Anyone who is a regular subscriber of the channel, welcome back. And for all of you who are watching me and watching these tactics videos for the first time, welcome along. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. And don't forget to check out my Chelsea career mode series that is currently ongoing on the channel. It is a realistic career mode series and one that I think you will enjoy. Today, as is pretty much tradition now, we're starting things off with Manchester City. Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. Pretty much every year we've started off with these other than FIFA 21 and it's no different this year. And there has been of course a little tweak with regards to of course that man up top Erling Haaland. So how does the tactic change a little bit compared to previous FIFA years? We're going to go into that today. Before we talk about the formation which is a 4-3-3 and a couple of position changes that I am going to take you through very shortly. First things first, let me talk to you about the Patreon. Do go and check out the Patreon because on there you can get access to a range of fantastic perks including my FIFA 23 custom tactics package. If you want to learn more about this tactics, you want all the instructions written out for you, you want ratings and rankings, you want strengths and weaknesses of tactics suitable teams to play as in FIFA with this tactic then you can get access to that on my Patreon. Great way to support the channel and get a whole host of other perks as well. Discord server access, uh, exclusive tactics videos, behind the scenes videos, early access to videos, fantasy football leagues, all that good stuff. Now with that being said, let's get back into the formation. So as I said, it is a 4-3-3. What we're going to do today is I'll show you how to recreate the tactic. I'll do a bit of talking as well and talk about why they do that as well as how they do it. So with the formation, yes, the 4-3-3, but there is a position change just one this time and that is Kevin De Bruyne here at attacking midfield we want to move him from central midfield and up to right attacking midfield what we're looking to do by doing that is getting him into those half spaces that he's very good at he likes to often make runs not just into the channels but in the half spaces and he gets him into good crossing positions we know how good his technique is how special his technique is particularly in those crossing situations where he can wrap his right foot around it and really gets that superb whip on it and that's what we're looking to do here. With regards to the central midfielder, which is Gundogan in this case, he is centre midfield rather than left centre midfield, so just bear that one in mind as well. What we did last year and in previous years is the left back has been a left wing back. This time we're keeping them at left back, um, and we'll talk about why they do that when we come on to his instructions. Other than that, there are no position changes, so let's get into the tactics. I should also let you know that I am gonna show you how it tweaks just slightly compared to when maybe Bernardo Silva plays in central midfield as opposed to Gundogan. There are some slightly different instructions there, so bear that one in mind as well. So defensively, what do we have? We have press after possession loss as we try and employ that counter press that they're so, so very good at. It's a little bit better this year in FIFA, not, not fantastic but it is a little bit better compared to FIFA 22 so you will find it to be a little bit more effective when you do lose possession the width this time is up a little bit 38 what I've noticed particularly this season but I think it's something that they did last season as well um, is that it's a little bit more stretched with regard to their defensive shape and their width and part of the reason why is to try and um, aid that press that counter press but it's also because they like to stop crosses coming into the box in the first place a little bit more. They don't want teams who are often going direct against them to kind of play to that strength. So as a result, it's a little bit more stretched. And that's what we went with 38. We don't want it too wide. We don't want too many gaps forming. You've still got that principle of that kind of compact shape in a roundabout way. But this time it's on 38. The depth is on 80, looking to play a high line. We're really boosting this up as I think they're getting more and more extreme with it, particularly with signings of the likes of Manuel Akanyi, for example, who's of course very, very pacey, probably their fastest centre-back. and I'm pretty sure he is on this game as well. And that aids them to do that with that high line. Offensively, what do we have? Well, build-up play is on slow build-up and chance creation is possession. I don't need to explain this one too much as I've kind of done it to death really we know what Manchester City are like and we know what Pep Guardiola teams are like with the width all the way down to 10 part of the reason is the only players who are really going to be out wide on the touch lines are the wingers and we're going to be able to replicate that with their player instructions 
What we are looking for is for the central midfielders, but also the fullbacks to really come tight, come close and help them with possession in those intricate short passing areas in the central area of the pitch. And this really allows you to do that to the utmost degree. Having it so kind of narrow and tight with only a defensive width on 10, you get a lot of kind of quick possession interchanges in those central areas. Players in the box is on eight, giving you four players in the box. Again, this will change slightly depending on if Gundogan is at central midfield or Bernardo Silva. This is for when Gundogan is at central midfield because he's that kind of true box-to-box -box central midfielder and you're going to see him supporting those attacking moves and looking to kind of show for cutbacks and it's one of the reasons why he's kind of been so prolific with regards to how many goals central midfielders will generally get you know he's always one of the top scorers and he's kind of continued that this season as well to start off with corners is on four which is a pretty standard for these tactics videos and the free kicks is on three we drop another man back this time often they will more likely maybe play it short particularly from kind of the deeper free kick situations not so much the wide ones you've got the likes of obviously De Bruyne and Cancelo who have really good whip and, and they can get some good trajectory on that but with the regards to the deep free kicks they want less men in the box and more men showing for it in those shorter options so coming on to the player instructions in starting off with edison in goal we have him on comes to crosses and sweeper keeper again not something i need to beat around a bush too much about because we know what he's like he's very aggressive in the way he plays likes to play on the front foot extremely confident um and you know it's part of that system as well they need a keeper who can do that and can travel far and really try and relieve the pressure off his defenders in those any of those sort of situations with the two center backs there is just one tweak and that is usually one of the center backs will be on aggressive interceptions now you'll notice this more with someone like john stones as opposed to ruben diaz but it is generally the right center back anyway whereas laporte plays more of a kind of conservative role and that kind of protector on the cover. The right centre back, and in particular John Stones, will look to step out a bit more and try and win possession in a more aggressive manner. He really looks to try and play on the front foot. And that's something that has kind of come on since he has been at Manchester City. You also see him do it for England often as well. And that's something that's kind of been bred into him. So you are just looking for that. Whereas, as I say, the left centre back is more of that cover behind one. Couple of different instructions for the fullbacks, starting with Kyle Walker at right back. As we know, he is taking more of that defensive, counter attacking, wary kind of role over the last couple of years or so. And as a result, he's very much an inverted fullback. And it's still very, very tough to recreate it. However, on FIFA 23, it is a bit more effective than what it has been in previous years. So there's definitely an improvement in that area. So we have him on inverted, but we also have him on stable while attacking. He's generally kind of an added central midfielder, and he's looking to kind of support those position moves. But as I say, also look to kind of counteract any sort of counter-attacking threat and transitions that the opposition are looking to formulate. At the left back, however, it's slightly different. With Cancelo, and it's what we spoke about why early we have him at left back this time rather than at left wing back as we have done in previous years. This time what you're noticing with Cancelo a lot more is he's coming into those central areas more and he's forming a lot of his attacking moves, crosses, assists, goals even being in those more the, more the half channels as opposed to on the flanks. And so as a result, his run type is inverted and his attacking runs are on during the attack. And that's the best way to recreate it. And as I say, it is doing a better job of that this year in FIFA 23 than it probably ever has done, really. So that's definitely something to look at as well. With Rodri in defensive midfield, we have him on cut passing lanes for his defensive behaviour. His attacking support is also stay back while attacking. We know what he is. He's very much an out and out defensive midfielder with an element of kind of recycling possession, but also springing counter attack. But generally, he's there to try and help Kyle Walker in that role of, of protect, protecting against opposition counter attacks. His defensive position is on cover centre, as the central midfielders and the fullbacks will cover those wide areas if and when they need to. And then positioning freedom is on stick to position. With Gundogan then, as we spoke about, more of that box-to-box -box midfielder. That's why on support and crosses, you want him on getting to the box with a cross. However, with attacking support, it's only on balance because you don't want him making constant runs in behind, beyond the striker. You're just looking to him to get into the box in crossing and cutback situations when he needs to so as a result that's only on balanced i'll show you how it changes with silver at the at the end of this kind of tactic his position freedom is stick to position and his defensive position is cover wing 
Now with De Bruyne, obviously different instructions because he is at Ram. So he's on comeback on defence to make sure he is tracking back. And his support on crosses is stay on the edge of the box of the cross this time as he very much pays that more of that advanced role as someone who recycles possession, picks up balls on the edge of the area. And that's where it really where he's at his best, isn't it? For both assists and goals, all of his goal contributions. With positioning freedom, he's on drift wide, as we spoke about earlier. He likes to make runs into the half spaces and also the channels and pick at the ball. And then it kind of creates an overload on that side as well. What you also have is the fact that with Kyle Walker, who isn't kind of getting forward support in tax on the whole, the Bruyne will then come out and support the right winger. So that's also what you're looking to do and why you want to make sure he's on the right side of the pitch. So with the attacking free, starting off with the wingers, both of the wingers have the same instructions in this case. We've gone with Foden and Silva, but you can go with a range of different wingers, Mares, Grealish, etc. The principles are generally the same. So you want them both on comeback on defence to make sure that they are tracking back. And then with the chance creation, you want them on stay wide. And as we spoke about earlier, they're the ones creating the width. They're going to try and stretch the opposition defence out. And then it creates space if the fullbacks get drawn out to mark them for the likes of Cancelo and the Bruyne to exploit those half spaces. And then you're really creating numerical overloads from there. What I will say is because some people often ask me this in the kind of Pep Guardiola and the Man City uh, tactics videos, is they ask if we should use the hug the sideline instruction on the D-pad. No, definitely don't do that because that's also going to impact the left and right back as well. That's not what you want. So it, with regard to that, stay clear from that. You just want to make sure that you, you're getting them individually to do it. And the best way to do it is just through the player instructions and not with the hug the touchline D-pad instruction. Support runs is on getting behind as they look to penetrate the back line as they've always done. And the fact that they're staying wide this time means that you've still got that space in the, in the half spaces as we spoke about. But they can still kind of penetrate and get into good attacking positions because then they can work cutbacks as is, they have done so many times. And it's really quite dangerous as well. Finally, support on crosses is getting to the box for the cross. And as I say, it is both the same for the left winger and the right winger as well. So finally, with Erling Haaland up front, we have him on getting behind, and that one is obviously the most natural and the most obvious one. We know what he's very, very good at and what he does so often, but his support runs is drift wide. And what you'll often see, and it's something that he did straight away when on his debut against West Ham, is he will come into these kind of half spaces and even the flanks just to try and peel off a defender, and that's how he works his space. Often, even if teams are playing a low block or a mid block, he can still find enough space because he peels off from that defender and then he can work maybe 10 or 15 yards to run him behind. And that is what you are looking for there. He also does it in this game. You may have seen the goal in the gameplay. Um, and so as a result, very, very handy. Finally, his defensive support is stay forward as again, he acts as that out ball. You don't want him conserving, well, you want him conserving his energy as much as possible. So I also mentioned that the system can change slightly depending on if Bernardo Silva is at central midfield instead of Gundogan. So I'll show you why that happens and also talk to you about why they do this as well. So the reason why they might do this is because they're expecting the opposition to be able to hurt them on the counter-attack even more. They may do this against the likes of Liverpool, for example, or Manchester United. And also because... They feel like maybe they're going to have more possession in those advanced areas, but it's going to be more tricky to kind of break the opposition down. They're not going to have as much kind of joy in the wide areas to get the cutbacks and the crosses in. So as a result, they're going to try and work that through the central areas even more with the likes of Bernardo Silva. So this time, rather than have the players in the box up to eight, giving you four players in the box, you're actually only going to have this on six, giving you three players in the box. And this time with Bernardo Silva, you want him still on balance attack, but this time on stay on the edge of the box for the cross instead. And that is going to enable you to kind of recreate that role a little bit more effectively, as opposed to with Gundogan when you're trying to create that box-to-box -box midfielder role. So with that being said, it is just about time to round this one off. We're going to go into some gameplay shortly. If you've got any questions about the tactic, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to check out my Patreon, as I spoke about at the start of the video, where you can get a rating and a ranking for the system. And in addition to that, you can also subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. Don't forget to check out my Chelsea career mode series that has just recently started. I think you guys will really enjoy that one. 
Subscribe to my second channel. The link to that is down below, as is the link to my Twitter. Give me a follow on there. And with that being said, I am going to round it off there. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next time, I will see you soon. Joao Cancelo, Gundogan, Kevin De Bruyne, on to Silva, Diaz, I don't think he'll be proud of that challenge and it's left to the referee to decide what happens next. Well, we've barely got started, and he's off, Stuart. Well, it doesn't matter how early it is. It's a reckless challenge, and he has to go for that. De Bruyne. And you need your defender to take charge. Bernardo Silva. Fantastic work to thwart the danger. Well, you can't watch Kevin De Bruyne and not be impressed, I think it's fair to say, Stuart. What in particular do you expect to see from him in this game? Well, Derek, when he's on form, when he's focused, he's a brilliant runner with the ball. He can take on players, he can go past people with ease, and he's got a great shot on him as well. I'm really looking forward to watching him play today. He's got the right idea with that pass. Well, it looked like a decent avenue of attack, but he couldn't keep himself onside. Well, he's just a bit too eager there. All well and good playing on the shoulder, but he just needs to bend his run to stay onside. Foden. Given away by City. Jadon Sancho. Plenty of support here. De Bruyne. Cross could be useful. Well, he wasn't messing around with the clearance. Well, in the end, nothing really to worry the keeper about. And it's gone out of play. Goal kick coming up. Jadon Sancho. And here is Malassia. Keeping possession of the ball with authority. Splendid tackle and a throw-in coming up. Holland. And fed forward. Pretty comfortable piece of defending. Use of advantage in United's favour. Well, it wasn't much of an advantage in the end, and he's retrospectively awarded the free kick. Well, the referee not messing about, he's cautioned him. Well, it had to be a yellow card, and he knew it was coming. Chances on. It's gone in. As you can see, he gave the keeper no chance there. He looked so confident, didn't he? That's a cool finish. So United restart the game. Disappointed to have conceded. Can they come up with an equaliser? Lisandro Martinez. Christian Eriksen now. And the emphasis is on creativity. Perfect challenge. And doing his opponent. Can he do it? And another one! Two quick goals! Will it turn out to be the two punch knockout? Well, as
as you can see again, De Bruyne plays a perfectly weighted pass beyond the defenders. And Bernardo Silva, what a clever bit of play it is from him, both with his movement and his finish. That's a nice goal. to Manchester United Ericsson on to Sancho very alert defending to cut off the supply well as the stats confirm City have controlled the ball yes they've played well when going forward but it's been their ability to regain the ball which has made them so hard to play against here and it makes them such a good team it's been a brilliant performance so far Diesch. City move it forward with purpose. Holland. Oh, moment of pure class. Had to catch it perfectly. And didn't he just? Well, as you can see, that's a great bit of skill. He times this so sweetly. What a good goal that is. Well, the action underway again. So comfortable for City, it's turning into a trouncing. Jaden Sancho. Good-looking sequence. A well, disappointing end to the move. Bernardo Silva. Diesch. Holland. It's with Joao Cancelo. Rodri. A oh, stylish ball. What can they do now? And he takes on the shot, and denied by the post. Well, they won't come much closer than that. It's a matter of inches from being a really good goal. Well, they can't dwell on not getting the rub of the green. Perhaps they can create another chance now. Ronaldo Silva, and keeping it out. Here's a change for Manchester United. Trying to pick out a teammate. Oh, it comes to nothing in the end. Really should have made more of that. Anthony. Ronaldo. A real opening now. Ronaldo. It could be up for grabs. Oh, marvellous defending to deny him. So two minutes of stoppage time here. Rodri. It's with Laporte. Ronaldo Silva. And that is going to be all for the first 45 then. The second half underway, and United left with a real mountain to climb. Firing it towards goal. Superb block. Rodri. It's with Joao Cancelo. Jack Grealish. The ball with Rodri. Well, they're quite content to knock it around inside their own half. Grealish. Here's Bernardo Silva. Rodri. Oh, far from the ideal pass. 
Scott McTominay. Here's Ronaldo. Opportunity in the wide area. Not problematic for the keeper. Joao Cancelo. The ball with Rodri. Foden. And continues his run. Walker. Foden. Here's Bernardo Silva. And that's sound goalkeeping. Taken short. Can he convert? And no worries for the goalkeeper. Well, those stats tell you everything. City have been excellent. And unless something changes, this could get embarrassing. Dallo. This is Varane. Sancho. Couldn't keep it. Can they hit on the break? Holland. Now with Silva. Foden. A bit wasteful from City. Jaden Sancho. Christian Eriksen now. Oh, in with a chance. Oh, tremendous work from the keeper to avert the danger. A concession of a corner here. And United will switch things around personnel-wise. Rodri. It's with Laporte. Walker. Foden. Laporte. A tremendous vision. Bernardo Silva. Well, the tackle vivacious Olympic from Varane. Is a no smoking stadium. Please do not smoke in any part of the stadium. Well, we have 20 minutes left in this game. Ronaldo. On to Fred. And take it away. Foden. Erling Haaland. De Bruyne now. Rodri. Precise ball movement. And it was a good looking sequence, but it comes to an end. Haaland. Keeper getting the touch. Threat over for now, it seems. Succeeded in keeping it in play. Malasia. Sancho. No way through. Oh, beating his opponent with ease. Fantastic work to thwart the danger. Jack Grealish. Ten minutes left for play. Phil Foden. Well, making high pressing work for them here. Foden. De Bruyne. Splendid defending. And under pressure, that was a fine claim. De Bruyne on to Cancelo well that's the kind of play you want from your defender well not giving him any breathing room Diogo Dallo Dallo Eriksen 
And the keeper there to catch it under no real pressure. Racing forward, trying to catch them out. Grealish. And he takes on the shot. And still danger here. On a time for composure on the ball. And so the referee blows the whistle. It is the end of the contest.